Hey everyone, it's three questions with Dondre Harris. All right, man. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. I'm like so blessed to have Dondre Harris uh, on my pack podcast. I was actually just in Bryant schools in Arkansas, which is like Arkansas looks very different than what I kind of pictured when I was a kid. I don't know, like it was <laughs> like watching shows about Arkansas on Canadian television. It's like a really awesome place. And I've met so many kind people there. Uh, when I, right before I spoke, I remember this very distinctly. Uh, I'm like really tired. I've been traveling and Dondre like sends this tweet out. And it was like one of the nicest tweets I've ever had. And I'm like, oh, and I just like, it was like, just gave me like energy before I spoke. And your school district was awesome. And uh, I just feel really blessed to have you on the podcast. So um, Dondre and I, you know, have connected over the last year just through social media. So I, he talked to me and I said, let's, let's do a podcast. So uh, a little bit about Dondre before we start. He's a principal right now uh, in, in Bryant Schools in Arkansas. But I'm going to let him tell more about that story in our second podcast. But really blessed to have you on, man. Really excited to have you here today. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, he's Dondre's awesome. You're gonna just love him. So uh, we're gonna start with the three questions podcast uh, here today. And so the first I'm gonna ask you, I met a lot of great teachers in Bryant um, in Arkansas this past summer. But when you think of a great teacher, who's someone that you think of and why? Oh, uh, well, when I first got that question, I was kind of thinking about all the teachers that I've had and um, many came to mind, but I, I guess I had to narrow it down really to two. And one, um, and they're both coaches uh, that I had in high school. And one of them, my name is uh, Roger Rembrandt, Coach Rembrandt. And he also was crazy about it. He hired me and gave me my really? first job. Yes, he did. That's awesome. And, uh, and also was my roommate. So I actually lived with him <laughs> when I got my first job. Yeah. I guess that was his uh, recruiting pitch. <laughs> uh, but when I was in high school, um, he had a young son. Yeah. And uh, – he, he he just let me babysit his kid, hmm. and uh, I guess it was a he. They needed a babysitter. They were new in town, and uh, my father who was also who was the second person was a head football coach and uh, athletic director. So he hired him, and uh, wow. he's he's let me drive his truck. And it was a standard shift, and you know nobody could drive a standard shift as a tenth grader, but I could. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, uh, "I don't even let my wife drive my truck, but but I'll let you drive it." So that's the one thing that kind of stuck with me. And uh, we have been knowing in, in contact since then. Um, I, I see him. We, we both graduates of University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Uh, I, I tailgate with him at homecoming. Uh, whenever I'm in the area, I stop by his house. And, you know, it's just kind of been very influential uh, throughout my educational career. Like I said, he gave me my first job. Yeah. That's amazing. And you said the other one was your was – your... Dad, did you say that? Is yeah, that my, my my dad. Um, my dad was a you know thirty plus year educator. Um, I got an opportunity to coach with my dad, hmm. but I guess growing up, uh, and my dad he tried to, I guess, model the the the, the way to do things, and I find myself doing things the way that he did now. Hmm. And one big thing that that he did was build relationship with kids and parents. Um, my dad has been retired for now seven or eight years, maybe. Mm. And he still has some of his former players. He's not on social media, but they'll reach out to me uh, checking up on him. And, wow. and I can remember that he would always, after practice, take kids home, like drive them home. You know, that's kind of a thing yeah. of the past. And uh, when I was playing for him, like I said, when I was in 10th grade, I don't know why everybody let me drive, uh, but it made his job easier because I'd load the players up and I'd go around dropping them off. And so when I got my first job or got into coaching, that's that's what I did. It's like you go to school all day, go to practice, and yeah. take kids home. That's just kind of what you did. And the, the things you get – while taking somebody home, uh, authentic conversations mm. with those people and kind of another level of trust with the parents that, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to let my kid not only practice with you, but you can bring them home and trust them in a the car. Uh, that that was kind of the thing that my dad did and kind of stood out to me. Mm -hmm. Let's give it up for all the coaches out there. I love that, I love that man. That's awesome. You know, my coaches are 
had such an impact on me and uh i think about them all the time and how much they connect with me actually i coached basketball for several years and when i left one of the communities i don't think i've ever shared this uh one of the families their their son had graduated from school years prior and they were like even though i hadn't coached their son for a couple of years they bought me a trip to, <laughs> to las vegas as like a thank you i'm like what because they just so <laughs> appreciate it and uh he was like a only child and you know i was really really young when i was coaching at the time and uh they just appreciated my influence on him and, and stuff like that too and just that that's something that i know um like great coaches that i've had had an impact not only their the the, the kids on their team but like the families too because they know yeah. how big of an impact you can absolutely have so i i i absolutely love that story so dondre i know that you are currently a middle school principal uh, you are also a, uh, you were an elementary principal. One of the things you talked about before we go on the podcast is really how important relationships are. And, you know, obviously learn that from your, from your dad, from your coaches, from some of the great teachers you've had. But when you think of an administrator who really inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? Um, when I first got into administration, um, I was kind of, I, I took a different path, I guess. Uh, I got an administration kind of mid-year. And I completed the year as an interim. And then the incoming principal really inherited me. Uh, was that in Bryant was uh, Dr. Todd Edwards. And he uh, he's retired now. And he sent me a text the other day from the beach uh, during, <laughs> during professional development. Is that mean? Uh, Is that like a mean tweet or a he, mean text? Kind of rubbing like, it in. Yeah, rubbing it in big time. Big time. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but I guess professionally, he he built really built capacity in all of his assistant principals. Mm -hmm. He, you know, you would think that uh, I wouldn't say that he was necessarily a great delegator, but he, when a situation would come up, he'd say, this would be good for you. You, you, you handle this one. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you take this. And I could always, even now, like I can always call on him and say, Hey, I, I got this situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he would never tell me how to do it, but he'd tell me how he would do it. Right. And uh, and kind of leave some some room for you know my own thoughts and and not necessarily take over the uh, I guess the decision making, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I guess I've got a really good support group uh, in in Bryant. Uh, Dr. Angie Dissinger, Dr. Karen Walters, our upper level administration, and uh, the other secondary principals. Um, they we all lean on each other a lot, and things that I I don't know, and and there's a lot of things that I don't know, uh, so I. I call and ask, ask them a lot. I love that. You know, I actually, and I, I got to give a little shout out to Angie. <laughs> Angie, Angie specifically, because she's awesome. So I, I love that. Just kind of, you know, there, there's two, there's two types of principles I've seen kind of in my career. There's the ones that basically are the principal and you're the AP and that's how it's going to be. <laughs> and like, if we can keep that role forever, that's how it is. Right. But then there's the principals who see their assistant principal, see people in their staff as like, this is a step to them, you know, eventually leading their own school, leading their own community, and really kind of putting them in a situation where they develop them. And I was blessed to have the latter and how important that was, because I, I, I've i heard stories about, you know, the other, and I, you know, I, obviously there's not just two categories of any type of leader, but I just, those are really distinct when you're sharing this. I remember when I was assistant principal, uh, we actually, uh, we were at a, I was at a K nine school and we were going to do like a trip to the U S like to New York city, which was unheard of at the time to take, like, it was a high school thing, not a, like a middle school thing. And I remember saying, Hey, I want to do this. And my principal said, well, it's kind of like, I don't know if it's a good idea, but you want to do it, you do it, but like, you got to make it work. And if it fails, this is on you. But if it succeeds, you're, I'm going to make sure you get all the credit. And it, it went so, so well. And he was so happy about it. And that was actually something the school district continued after uh, we did this. But he, I wanted to try something that he wasn't totally comfortable with. But he wanted to, to put me in a situation where he didn't just say no, where I was like, yeah, like, I want to try this. And he's like, yeah, let's go for it. Let's see how it goes. And I, I that when you, when you said, like, he, he would do the same thing, he would, he wouldn't tell me how I should do things, but he, sometimes when I needed, he'd say like, this is what I would do. 
but he also knew we were very different personalities and which is part of the reason he hired me because he didn't need him. He didn't need yeah. two of him. He needed someone very different. So I just, I think that's sometimes through your failures too. And I had those as well. Um, you learn a ton that when you are in a situation where you lead a building, that's progression. It's not like you didn't have the opportunity to lead in your staff. And he, you know, sometimes he would defer to me first thing. Sometimes you say like, no, you can't. Cause <laughs> if you screw this up, then, you know, like, they're not going to be, be bad for him. Yeah, it's great. So <laughs> like he had to pick and choose those, but he gave me way more opportunities to lead and so much so that when I, 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 I feel bad for saying this because I know this is not everyone's situation. When I like within two years, I was a principal and I hate saying this. It went amazingly smooth for me. Like it was yeah. really, really easy. And it was because he let me lead as much as possible in that building. And so I like, I felt like it was so prepared because of it right it's like it's like a backup quarterback actually getting tons of reps and then yes. when they start they're ready to go so just just love that all right last question i know you're a continuous learner we had a great conversation before we even started and you're totally open you always are trying to get better trying to learn you know for your community so you can continuously serve them obviously in your answers you're, you're modeling that but if you can go back to your very first year of teaching um what advice would you give to your first year teacher self Oh, so and I like I, I've I've got a crazy experience, I guess. And like I told mentioned um Coach Rembrandt, who was my who gave me my first job and and uh I, I lived with him and but what I did say is that he didn't finish that year. He 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 left. He he got out of education. Hmm. And uh so all of his duties kind of fell on my shoulders and the rent and the rent also uh, oh, wow. fell on my shoulders. Yeah. Uh, but I got to experience so many things that if I would have been anywhere else or in any other kind of situation, I would have not had the opportunity to experience. Mm -hmm. So I would say one thing that I would tell my younger self is, uh, you know, and, and there were times that I shied away from, from doing things because I was like, well, I, I don't want to do that or I don't feel like I have to do that, but do, do it all, right. do it all. Especially as a young, at a young age when, you know, 22 years old, uh, knees were good. Back was good. You know, just, just go right. and, and, and be a sponge and soak up everything that you can and, and don't limit yourself. Like I said, I was a, came in as an, a PE teacher and, you know, a lot of times PE teachers, I believe get, looked down upon because they're just rolling balls out and mm. or, or things like that. But, you know, don't limit yourself to just uh, impacting people in the gym or in that space. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you can do more things. Like I, I wish that um, I would have branched out more as a, you know, early on in my teaching career, like yeah. as a first year teacher. So I would tell any, any teacher that. Yeah. And I think that's, that's something that I'm really passionate about. There's, there's so many, there's some people who say like, Oh, like, unless you've taught for 10 years, like, I don't want you speaking up with me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like there's actually, you know, in your very first year, there's all, there's some benefits to actually never have taught that you might see things in a totally different way and a different approach that there's some really good stuff. Like, so my, my whole mentality with pretty much everything in my life is just go do it and then figure it out later. And then if you like it, you'll stick with it. You know, weird, weirdly enough, I actually started this podcast um, with a microphone plugged in my phone. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. And then as I got more into it, then it evolved into what it what it's becoming right now. And hopefully it continues to evolve over this time. So like, I love that advice, because sometimes we constantly talk ourselves out of trying new things but then we want our kids to continuously grow and learn and we can't yeah. really ask them that if we're not doing it ourselves. So Andre, I, I like, I gotta just say, first of all, again, shout out to Brian schools. You're awesome for having me, but you just really made an impact on me there. And so I was really glad when you reached out to me and connect with me that we could actually continue this conversation. And I know we're going to continue it after this podcast as well. I'm going to have you back on right away. So everyone, make sure you connect with Dondre. Dondre, thank you so much for being on the uh, podcast today. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to listen.